when this life is o'er, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away. Fly away in the morning when I die. Hallelujah, by and by. I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. That's happy music, and we're happy today. So glad to be able to come to you on this edition of From the Shepherd to the Sheep. And today we have a guest speaker, my protege, Brother Tyler Candy. He's doing a great work for God, and we're so pleased with him and what he's doing for the Lord Jesus. We welcome him today. Brother Tyler. Well, welcome back to our final installation of the series this month in November in Romans, chapter 5 and 6. And I hope that you have enjoyed this series as we've been talking about our new standing in Christ after we've been saved and how we are to die to sin and no longer be under the, the dominion of sin. We are no longer slaves of sin, but instead we are to serve Christ with our life. And I hope that's an encouragement to you and I hope that you can share this with somebody who might be encouraged and challenged by it as well. We've already discussed many subjects from ranging from getting saved to why would we go back to sin after we're saved uh, to living our lives for Christ because we are no longer under the dominion of sin and then using our bodies for Christ now that we are saved. I want to finish up this series as we, as we finish up on our last episode here for the month and in Romans chapter 6. So why don't you turn there with me in your King James Bible. Romans chapter 6, we're going to look at verse 15 and 16. The Bible here says, What then shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey his servants, ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death, or of obedience unto righteousness. We're kind of continuing the thought from last time about the law and grace. And we talked about the dispensations of grace or of, of Jesus, of, of God during that time of the Bible. And there's different dispensations and God dealt differently with his people during those times. And uh, we no longer fall under the dispensation of law uh, or of when God made his People, the Jews, follow the law to a letter, and if they didn't, they'd have to sacrifice a lamb or a goat or a bullock for the sin offering. And now we are under the grace that God has given to us because Jesus Christ was sacrificed and rose again three days later victorious over sin. And that's how we have an opportunity to live for Him. So now that we live in grace, why would we go back to the law? Why would we live like the times in the law? What shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? Now that you have the opportunity to just live your life, why would you just sin and sin and sin and live like the world? Yes, you don't have to go to an altar and you don't have to sacrifice a lamb every time you sin now. So it becomes easier for you to just go out and do anything you want. But there are other aspects that uh, happen. There are other consequences to your actions when you do that. You see, I, I have two sons and I'm raising them and my oldest is starting to learn that when there when you decide to do something there are consequences for that whether it's good or bad when there's uh, something that he does that's good or he says something that's good there are good consequences but then when he does something that's bad there are bad consequences or constructive consequences I guess you could say but we use the word consequences usually in a bad sense but there can be good consequences as well in this dispensation of grace, we have an opportunity to live the victorious life that God has given to us. But if we go back to that sin, if we live uh, our lives however we want to, in whatever way we want to, we lose out on all the blessings that God wants to give to us in this dispensation of grace. Why would we, now that we're not under the law, why would we just go out and sin? Paul here emphatically says, God forbid. He does. He says that God does not want you going back and sinning. He wants you living for Him. He wants you living your life. In verse 16, To whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom you obey. So whether you yield your body, yield your, yield your life 
to serve sin, you will obey sin. But if you yield your life to God, you will obey God. And you will live that life in which is righteous and just and holy as best as we possibly can on this earth. When, while we are here on this earth, we cannot main, contain, we are not, cannot attain uh, spiritual perfection because God is only holy and Jesus Christ was the only sinless person who ever lived on this earth. So you and I cannot attain that holiness, uh, that, that type of holiness, but you and I can strive to be holy. You and I can live our lives conformed to the image of Jesus Christ and outside of the sin that's in this world, not conforming to this world, and not going back and being a servant of sin, not obeying sin, but instead conforming to Jesus Christ, obeying Jesus Christ, obeying the righteousness of God, and living our lives out that way, living our lives in victory, in victory, victorious Christian living, that is how we ought to do it. So how do we do that? We die to ourselves. We live for the Spirit. We, uh, we uh, forsake the flesh, the world, the flesh, and the devil. We, we set that aside and we say, I'm not going to live for you. I'm going to die to myself today, and instead I'm going to live for Christ. I'm going to allow Christ to transform my life. Uh, as Romans 12 says, that we are to transform the renewing of our mind so that we can prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God in our lives. And we are to do that by yielding ourselves to Christ, yielding ourselves to God, because He loved us so much. Going all the way back to Romans 5 eight, God commended His love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And it's through His death, burial, and resurrection that you and I have an opportunity to now live victoriously for Jesus Christ. And through this series, I hope that that key uh, element, that main theme, has been prominent, that, that you've been able to understand that because Christ loved you, died for you, you accepted him, now you can live victorious for him. And I hope that you'll do that today and in the months and years to come in your life. Remember this, Christian, that you make the decision to die to yourself or to die uh, spiritually, to not be alive in Christ, but instead to live like the sinful world that we are around. You make that decision, but it's only through Jesus Christ that you're able to live a live, victorious Christian life for, for Him. And I hope that you'll do that. Contend for the faith, pray for revival, Christian, and may the Lord bless you. Thank you so much for that. What a blessing. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for what we've heard today. Help us now to know for sure that heaven is our home and that we're living in the center of your perfect will. With our heads bowed and eyes closed, if you've never been saved, Call upon the name of Jesus right now. He's the only one who can save you. Just pray something like this from your heart to God. Dear God, I admit that I'm a sinner. I deserve to pay for my sins. I believe Jesus died to save me, and right now I receive him into my heart as my own personal Savior. If you prayed that prayer, won't you let us know? We'd love to rejoice with you and be a help to you. And Right now, I want to encourage everyone to keep winning souls and keep on living the Christian life. Father, we thank you for the Christians out there today who've been encouraged and are going to go on for you today. Help them, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You know, the only way we can live this life for Jesus Christ successfully is by His grace. Join me, if you would. Amazing. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now. I see God bless you today. You are listening to From the Shepherd to the Sheep Daily Devotionals. This is a ministry of Central Baptist Church in Woodbridge, Virginia. If you would like to learn more about our ministries, you can find us online at cbcwoodbridge.org. 
You will also find many other helpful resources there, including preaching, devotionals, and songs. We thank you for listening to this devotional from the Shepherd to the Sheep.